Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to take a look at the Magicka Templar DD for Morrowind. There is a lot of really good combos available with Magicka Templar this patch. So what I will do is, I will show you a double Destro setup first, and then at the end of the video I will also show you a dual wheel Destro setup. And on my website you can find even more combos that might interest you and that we still have to test later on. So I guess let's get started. Basics first, when we look at our stats. Keep in mind, I do run precise weapons here because I do not have any sharpened maelstrom weapons. If you want, I will show you the champion point for the precise setup. So if you have sharpened maelstrom weapons, then on my website you will find the right champion point setup. But I will talk about that later. That's also why we have pretty high spell crit. Because we run precise weapons. And you see magic recovery is pretty nice. Spell damage is really high. We're using the Thief Mundus Stone. Now in terms of race. I recommend being high elf. Because you get flame frost and shock damage 4%. 10% max magicka and magic recovery. A Breton or a dark elf also works. Vampire, I recommend being one, but depends, like, in the new trial, Halls of Fabrication, you probably, you don't want to be higher than stage one. If you're higher, you're gonna get extra fire damage, which will deal a ton of damage, and you almost get one shot. So if you're going to a place where you can find a lot of fire damage, you should probably go to stage one. If there's no fire damage, Use stage 2 or stage 3 because you get 10% more magical recovery and you get damage mitigation for free. Really nice. Now, in terms of buff food, we're using the normal one, max health and max magicka. You also can run this one, but I don't think it's needed. The normal spell power pots, like always, because you want the spell damage buff and the, like, 7600 magicka you get back from them which is really nice in terms of gear setup so i will just show you this one here now you also can run war maiden for example it's slightly stronger but it's pretty difficult to get but on my website you will find more combos so now what am i running here i have five julianos basically one heavy piece and everything else is light armor so i run one heavy and six light the next set that i run is master architect so we have five julianos five architect and the maelstrom weapons i run two spell damage glyphs and a magic recovery glyph and you see master architect it's pretty strong you get the the five piece bonus when you activate the ultimate you gain 15 percent more damage for yourself and two of your allies and this works pretty good on a Magicka Temple because we are using the Empowering Sweep, which is really strong. Deals really nice magic damage, gives you damage mitigation, and it only costs 72 ulti points. So you can use this all the time to buff you and your group members. That's what I like about this setup. On the front bar, I have the Shock, Maelstrom Lightning, now in precise. Best in slot would be sharpened, but the difference is not that huge. At least not at the moment. Drain Magicka Poison here. They're really nice. Now you don't necessarily need to run those because they're quite expensive. You could run a second Magicka Recovery Glyph or just do a few more heavy attacks. To compensate for not using those here. That's the gear setup. At the end of the video I will show you a dual wield setup. Now I, you see I'm not running a monster set. Why? Basically... You can run one, yes, it, they give you good DPS, but Master Architect combined with Julianos deals really nice damage. Champion points. Now this is for the precise setup. If you want a sharpened setup, check it on my website. Here nothing really changes, we have 100 here, 64 tenacity. Now here is where things change. So because I'm running a precise weapon, I put 60 points into spell erosion to get 4,400 spell penetration. 48 elfborn, 43 elemental expert, 
11 mastered arms and i only put 48 toma touch now you might think yeah but we don't have the, the exploited passive at the moment for now in the new trial like most bosses have around 25 percent off balance uptime so that's not that much that's why i decided to take quite a lot of points out here and place them here if you run sharpened you don't need those points here you can run 75 toma touch but it's just for the precise setup here with my precise weapons if you don't have Maelstrom weapons overall it doesn't matter you what you can do is you can run like Giuliano's staves a shock and a fire one and then just run one piece Molakina or a Groftar piece because Molakina gives you like the one piece gives you 129 spell damage so it's a nice trade-off then you see you can use a weapon damage glyph on the back bar if you fire stuff and on the front bar you run the poisons or you can run a shock damage glyph or even this like undead the Edra damage glyph so there's a lot of really good options you don't necessarily need melzer weapons now in terms of skill setup we have ritual of retribution here pretty expensive so you might not always want to cast this but yeah it's it's really nice aoe damage on and on boss fights it also hits quite hard as long as you can keep it up and you see it has a 12 seconds duration vampire spain now previously i was running reflective light why did i change basically this has a 12 seconds duration now because everything costs a lot more I use a bit I use this ability because reflective light is like six seconds seven or eight seconds this is 12 seconds so I need to cast it less frequently I can use other abilities so I save some magicka although it's not a lot punching sweep still one of the strongest abilities also heals you for a lot purifying light now this is one of your strongest dots actually it hits like a truck it only has a six second duration so you need to learn to to keep this up as much as possible inner light for the extra seven percent max magicka and then thunderous rage now we don't really need this ultimate because when we use master architect we're using empowering sweeps however this needs to be here because of ancient knowledge you see Gain bonus effects based on your stuff type while you have a destruction stuff ability slotted. So only having the stuff doesn't help. You need the ability here and the ultimate is here and blockade of fire is here. So we have each and one bar. Now obviously if you start a boss fight use this it will deal way more damage. But in boss fights itself use empowering sweeps because you want to get the master architect to proc as much as possible with a cheap ultimate blockade of fire still really strong you see like burning enemies take 20 percent more damage from this ability really strong so it needs to be up at all times blazing spear also hits like a truck and the thing is you see while active an ally can activate that bless shards in restoring 4k magic or stamina which Ever maximum is higher so that's also what I like I mean usually the healers also use it but if you have a if you have a magicka templar DD it also supports the the magicka damage dealers or the tanks so they can pick up that st stuff you could run the other morph the luminous shards which also would restore magicka to yourself but it deals like 30% less damage so it's quite a huge damage loss Harness Magicka, really strong ability, well, strong in terms of uh, defensive, because it saves you a lot. Like, you need this. If you don't use this in trials, you're going to die. So you need this. Then we have Jesus Beam, Radiant Oppression, still one of the strongest executes. And it's on the back bar now, because we use a fire stuff here. It's a single target ability, so it gets buffed by the 8%. Channel focus, you see when we have spell resistance and physical resistance when we use this, it goes up by quite a lot, really nice. Plus every 0.5 seconds you get 
120 magica. So it's you need this on the ground at all times to be able to sustain. What you need to understand is you see the buff holds for like 18 seconds, but when you move out, it will run like it will go away a lot faster. Does it actually say which defends you while you stand within it and for up to eight seconds? So the moment you leave the rune, the buff will stay on you for eight seconds and then it's gone. If you go back it, it back in, it refreshes. And then we have the empowering sweep, cheap ultimate deals, really nice damage, and it gives you damage mitigation as well. So I think the master architect combo with this setup synergizes really well. I also will have another combo, but dual wield setup with master architect, etc., war made, and all that kind of stuff on my website, but I have yet to farm the gear to test it out. Now, in terms of rotation, in terms of rotation, so what you need to know is you see on the back bar we have blockade blazing spear. And you see I have the time here from Serendar. So it's like 8 seconds. Or, well, the duration of this is 8 seconds. This is also 8 seconds. So it's really nice. So basically, the mo like when we are on our front bar, the moment it reaches 2 seconds, I swap to the back bar, use blockade, use spear and weapon swap. Now, you immediately want to weapon swap. You want to weapon swap before the spear hits the ground because we know the shock stuff, lightning stuff increases your damage done with AoE effect abilities by 8%. So if you swap before it impacts, you will benefit from the 8%. If you swap too late, it's not going to benefit from the 8%. That's, uh, that's just a small like detail. If you need to recross channeled focus, use channeled focus first, then blazing spear weapon swap. Now, rotation, I mean, what I'm trying to do is I try to keep, keep track of vampire Spain and blockade. So those are like probably the more or less the most important dots you have. And vampire Spain is pretty long. So you just want to make sure to keep up all those things. There is not a lot of time to sweep. Basically, I mean, you see, when I use Purifying Light, Vamp, Bane, I already need to weapon swap, reapply the dots, and then sweep again. All kind of stuff. So what I'm trying to say is front bar, reapply when needed, and on the back bar, when blockade reaches like two seconds, I swap to the back bar, right? Like, oh, two seconds, reapply blockade, spear, swap to the front bar again. Now, on console, you can track ground based abilities, but what you can do is you can either track Vampire's Pain and probably Purifying Light. So, you kind of need to get the hang of it. The next thing I want you to understand is. When we reach execute, we are always staying on the back bar. The only thing we will do is reapply blockade, spear, and then beam. And obviously use the crescent sweep if we have to. But you want to keep up blockade, spear, and then like two beams. But we will not swap to the front bar anymore when we are in execute. So yeah, I mean... There is not like the perfect rotation, it's always based on what kind of boss you fight. That's probably a little bit the tricky part on Magicka Templar. Sure, you probably could do a solid rotation, but then you will lose DPS at some point. And reapplying dots like Vampire's Bane a little bit too early, you're not really gonna lose a lot of DPS. Because like when you read this blast an enemy with a charge of radiant heat dealing 5400 flame damage and additional dot damage so even the impact alone already does damage and you can weapon swap cancel those abilities very well on on magicka temple when i when you see i use purifying light 
this full animation and when I do this it's basically you, you don't see it when a weapon swap cancel same with vamp banes full animation weapon swap the ritual of retribution same you can animation cancel everything so well on magical templar it's it's really nice you just kind of need to get the hang of when to reapply the dots on the front bar back bar really simple just track one ability like blockade you know oh, we reach two seconds or maybe one second then weapon swap reapply the dots swap back and all that other stuff you will never have a, a perfect uptime because there is a lot of things to keep up but the stuff hits quite hard especially purifying light it's like i always have problems to keep this up but it's one of your strongest abilities it only costs 1600 magic so it's very cheap now let's check out the dual wield setup which is a little bit different this is basically the old school setup with dual wield five julianos two groftar make sure to have five one one set up and then you have five moon entry three spell damage glyphs because the thing is with those weapons like the moon dancer proc you get really high magic recoveries you don't really need to invest too much into sustain at least not as i've noticed and moon dancer in, you can use a inferno or a shock stuff on the back bar or just random stuff it doesn't really matter that much as long as you can proc the moon dancer buff on the front bar you will be good to go and you see i have sharpened weapons here so make sure to use the sharpened cp setup and not the precise one now the next thing that also would work you could run master architect but obviously like it's really hard to get the weapons so i will have to wait and see how that works out but this is basically the second setup you can run also very effective both setups like double destro or like dual wield it's probably more or less about the same damage output it's really hard to say for example actually the dual wield setup when we look at the new trial could actually be nice because you I sometimes have a lot of problems to break free especially on the last boss so from time to time I can do a heavy attack on dual wield and actually get stamina back so I don't get knocked back and die and all that kind of stuff but it's mostly about the moon dancer proc because you see like you gain 450 magical recovery that's a lot and, and you can gain a lot of spell damage as well and we you see we see that all already 3k spell damage so it's really nice Make sure not to forget the dual wield passive here. Make sure, not, like at least this one, because each sword increases your damage done by 2.5%. So you do a lot of extra damage. As overall setup, like nothing really changed. The only thing that changes is we put the fire, like the death ulti on the back bar and the shooting star on the front bar because this time we don't need any destruction stuff ability on the front bar because we are running dual wield anyway so that's really the only thing that changes and yeah like i said i will test a few other setups like five war maiden combined with five master architect to see what kind of damage we can pull out but first obviously have to farm the weapons because drop rate like always really harsh but don't worry moon dancer setup still totally fine and yeah sustain with it is also nice as long as you can get synergies obviously otherwise you see we are 706 magic recovery if you don't get the the proc from the moon dancer you will run into sustain issues that's why I sometimes say maybe a shock stuff on the back bar might be better because you can do heavy attacks and sustain will be fine. Especially on trash. Because fire is only single target. Like heavy attack. Shock has AoE damage. So I know it's probably a little bit confusing because there is so much things that work well on a Magicka Templar. It's actually like really nice compared to other classes. And I will test more out once I know more about the new setup with the War Maiden, Master Architect. Once I farm the stuff, 
I will let you know again. For now, that's it. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comment section below. If you like the video, please hit that like button. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Cheers.